hopefully on some projects um, to increase access to justice here in Wyoming. Uh, Chris already went through some of this, but just some information on how to interact today. Uh, you have little symbols on the left there uh, if you want to um, uh, raise your virtual hand. Um, I will answer some questions at the end um, via audio, um, and you're also welcome to type questions throughout the presentation. Um, and I will answer probably answer most of those at the end of the presentation. Okay, so this is uh, me. Um, I have a, both a law degree and a library degree. Some of you may remember me. I was at the Wyoming State Law Library for about a year before I moved over to the Wyoming Center for Legal Aid. Uh, I'm there I am a staff attorney and their technology coordinator. Uh, my contact information is here. I'll give it to you again at the end of the presentation. I did get my, just a little information, I did get my library degree from the University of Iowa, my law degree from DU. Um, I was a librarian for about more than 10 years, I think, and uh, I was, uh, I've been a lawyer since 2008. Uh, just recently licensed here in Wyoming as well as Colorado. So, just to begin the presentation, um, what are you going to get from this webinar? Uh, I hope to provide a few, little bit of information. One is t for you to learn more about what we do at the Wyoming Center for Legal Aid. Um, I, we're, we're a very new entity. We're working on a lot of new projects. Um, I know some of you may have gotten the letter I sent out uh, early or late last year, I guess, um, about some of the projects that we've got going, but hopefully this will give you a better idea of why we're here and some of the future projects, current and future projects that we're going to be working on. Um, I also think that for you, I'm hoping to give you some uh, new ways, places to refer your patrons for legal services and information um, so that you can help them, uh, help, help them find answers to their legal problems. Um, also so that you know, you can help with the, um, the process, the access to justice process in Wyoming so that we can uh, find ways to get more people um, access to the courts and access to um, other legal information. Uh, right now, just to, to talk a little bit about the access to justice um, initiative and uh, the reason for that here in Wyoming. There is a growing justice gap, and this is in Wyoming as well as nationwide. Um, larger large numbers of people um, are going into court by themselves. Um, mostly these are low and moderate, modest income individuals that can't afford to hire an attorney. They can't afford full legal services. And so a lot of the projects that we're undertaking are to increase access to legal information and increase ways to increase access to the courts um, because, you know, as you all know, it, it's, it's a very complicated and daunting process for most people. Um, just some Wyoming specific information. Uh, right now there's in some courts 75 to 80 percent of the litigants who are going into the courts do not have an attorney. They're, they're doing this process by themselves. Um, it, some statistics, you, you know, you can read here private attorneys. There's about one private attorney for every 250 Wyoming residents, but there's only one legal aid attorney for about every 7,500 7, poor Wyoming residents, low-income Wyoming residents. Um, what that means really is that while we would love to give everybody an attorney, there's just no way that we can do that. Um, and so we need to find ways that we can, you know, not only increase access to attorneys to direct legal representation, but also provide other ways for them to get the information they need to get themselves into court and through the court hearing or the court trial or the court processes that they need to go through um, you know to find a, to solve their legal problems uh, this is a quote from the uh, Supreme Court Justice Hugo Black uh, you know basically just talking about equal justice and how we you know we don't want that to depend on the amount of money a person has uh, you know, we want justice, equal justice for everyone, at least the opportunity for equal justice for everyone. So uh, in order to address those issues uh, and to increase the amount of justice available to low-income citizens in Wyoming, in 2010, 2010, the Wyoming legislator passed the Wyoming Civil Legal Services Act. Um, and what this did was it provided a means to collect some funds to uh, put toward uh, a program that would help to increase uh, services to indigent citizens in the, in the state of Wyoming. 
Uh, the funds are collected through a $10 filing fee that everyone who files a civil court case has, now has to pay in addition to the regular filing fee. Um, and so that funding, so we are a state funded in institution because we are funded by uh, those, those fees um, and we are organized, we are an entity of the Wyoming Supreme Court. And we came into being about a year after this particular act passed, so in, in 2011. Um, our mission is to help uh, low-income citizens, um, you know, find find an answer to their civil legal needs. Um, there were some, and this is a little will come into play a little bit later. There are some things that we can't do. Uh, the statute prohibits us from providing services to those seeking tort damages, uh, which is primarily personal injury cases, uh, criminal defense, uh, claims against you know cities, municipalities. Um, you know, other political subdivisions, agencies, I mean, you know, except those seeking some sort of public benefit. Um, but that's, uh, you know, primarily, you know, it does put a limit on the sorts of information that we're going to have available. Um, and it's reason really to, um, you know, that you're still going to want to be, you know, working with Diane at the State Law Library. You're still going to want to keep those wonderful NOLO books that you have in your collection. Um, those are all still very important to this process. Um, since since there is a limit to the the sorts of sorts of issues that we can address, um, so this is a, a graphic about the, the about the, the sort of access to justice uh, bridge and, and filling that filling that gap that access to justice gap. Um, you know, at the far end, we have information about uh, you know sort of the gold standard that's full representation, providing everybody with an attorney. Um, one of the things that we are trying to do is to increase the number of people who do, who will be able to have an attorney represent them, go with them to court, help them prepare their documents, you know, work with them through the whole process, but those are very, very limited resources. So we simply, simply cannot provide that to every person in Wyoming. So one of the things we're doing is trying to fill in the rest of that bridge uh, from those with no representation to those who maybe we can provide some representation to, but who still may have to do a large part of the process themselves. You know, what we found is that even some advice is better than having no advice, um, you know, when you're going into court. Um, and these, these are areas where traditionally Wyoming really hasn't had a lot of resources. Um, you know, there have been some divorce forms packets that are provided by the Wyoming Supreme Court that have been available for about 10 years now. Uh, but not a lot of other self-help information, as you're probably aware. I know a lot of you have asked about, you know, forms, and those are those are things that we're working on. Um, we're also trying to provide uh, some more limited advice. Um, that's the hotline. That's one of the things we're doing there. Is we're able to give folks some brief advice, um, even if you know we can't provide them with with an attorney for all of their case. And we're also working on some projects to to um, allow attorneys in the state to maybe just help folks with part of a case rather than taking on a whole case, um, which should keep costs down for those, you know, especially those with modest incomes. So this is a, a big list, but, you know, what, what are we doing to achieve our mission? And, you know, I would say that's quite a lot. Um, you know, we're, we are providing grants to places like Legal Aid of Wyoming that does provide direct legal services and attorneys to, to folks, low-income individuals without, um, without the means to hire a lawyer. Uh, as many of you know, we are maintaining a website now with a lot of uh, practical information, self-help information that we're trying to write in plain language so that folks um, you know, are able to understand that a little better and use that to help them get through the process. Um, in addition, we're gonna be adding forms and there's a lot of good referral information and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, we're also going forward with um, trying to set up and host and partner with folks to provide legal clinics and seminars around the state. Um, I know right now there are a few places that are already doing that um, out in Teton County. Uh, they're working with um, the, uh, the uh, Teton County Access to Justice Center. Uh, they, are all, they are, the Teton County Access to Justice Center is receiving funds, grant funds from us. Um, but I know they're working with the Teton uh, Library out there to provide uh, this, this spring to provide some legal seminars, legal information seminars. The uh, uh, Laramie County Library has also been working with Legal Aid of Wyoming and the State Bar to provide legal seminars. So hopefully we can expand that to other locations around the state. And that's one thing I wanted you to know is that we would, 
we would love to hear from you as to whether you might be interested, whether you have you know, community space uh, in hosting maybe a clinic or a seminar, and we can work to get that set up, whether with a local attorney or maybe with one of our attorneys who can come out and provide an educational seminar on you know, something like wills and trusts or di you know, divorce or uh, you know, landlord-tenant issues is another popular, debt issues. Um, any of those things, but you know, please contact us about that if, if you think that might be something that you could do at your library. We're also going to be working um, toward distributing more self-help tools since we know not everybody accesses the internet um, in printed brochures and pamphlets. I'm sure we'll be distributing those to the court clerks, but we'd also like to probably get some of those at least out to the libraries. Um, in addition to that, we're working with several legal organizations like the Wyoming State Bar and the Access to Justice Commission to increase free and low-cost private attorney assistance. You know, there's already a lot of wonderful attorneys who are, who are doing this already, providing free and low-cost help to their, their community. Um, you know, we're just going to try and, and see if we can encourage a few more attorneys to provide those services because they are so valuable to, to someone who doesn't have, have the means to afford that. Um, and lastly, and Part of the reason I'm talking to you today is that we want to work with community organizations to um, identify and reach out to those who you know really most need our services, um, and that's why um, you know why we're looking at working with libraries. Um, you know why are we working? You know reaching out to you. It's because you know we think you're your natural partners in this process. I mean you already you're already hubs in your community. You provide you know, lots of information and referral services, um, you know, you're used to working with, you know, good quality authoritative information and services and getting those to people. Um, and also because you do have, you know, technology skills and you have technology that's publicly available for people to access. And that's going to be particular in, particularly important um, in terms of the tools that we're looking to provide, um, especially the self-help tools like, like the website and like the forms that we're going to be providing to the public. Um, and that's probably, you know, there's probably also going to, um, you know, maybe affect some of your services too. So I'll talk, talk a little bit about that um, in a minute. Um, so I had any questions so far, but, um, you know, go ahead and ask them. I, again, I'll probably try and answer those at the end of the presentation. I, I think that may be the easiest thing to do. Um, so, in terms of the projects that we have ongoing right now, which I'm sure is the reason a lot of you have tuned in today, um, the first project I'll talk about is the hotline. Um, hopefully some of you are aware already because of the, uh, the information that I sent out earlier, but um, this is a hotline that is available statewide. Um, the number, as you can see there, 877-432-9955. This is the primary um, portal for access to legal aid services in the state. Um, this number is um, manned, it's, it's hosted by uh, Legal Aid of Wyoming, um, and they're able to do that because we've given them a, a grant from the, the Civil Legal Services funds. And they have, they have one to two attorneys working most of the time to um, provide services to those who qualify for those services. Um, there, is, there is an income qualification for these services, um, generally speaking, um, it's based on uh, the federal poverty guidelines. It's a little bit higher than that, um, but um, you know they they also receive funding from the federal government, and the federal government also has these same poverty guidelines. And so, um, you know, unfortunately, they can't they can't give advice to everyone, but um, you know they are able to provide advice to those who are most in need. Um, you know, because because you know all of these services are limited. Um, but if, if they do income qualify, and I should mention, they also do have a program for seniors that doesn't necessarily require or is, that isn't necessarily based on income. And so if you do have seniors um, who have uh, legal problems, you, you can also give them the, hot, the legal aid hotline number uh, because they can, you know, most likely will be able to qualify for some, for some services. So what's going to happen when they call that number? Um, is that they're going, there's going to be some questions about their income and their assets and, and various things to see if they qualify for these services. And then when they qualify, they'll be able to speak to a legal aid attorney and get some, get some advice, some brief advice about their, their legal problem. You know, whether that's, you know, how do I fill out a particular form or, you know, what do I do with this debt collector that just called me or, 
you know, how do I deal with my landlord because he's not fixing my, my water? You know, these sorts of, these sorts of issues, um, you know, they should be able to get some advice from a legal aid attorney. And they can also, if they have a more complicated problem, they can apply for extended services um, on that number. Um, just some, some notes from the first quarter of this year, January to March, you know, the hotline served, you know, almost 800 callers from across the state. So, um, you know, it does seem to be being used and, you know, they're, they're looking, you know, they, they want it to be used. So, you know, please feel free to refer your patrons to that number. Um, if the hotline cannot help, and all of this information here on the screen is also on our website, which I'll show you in a moment, but there are some additional um, assistance if, you know, if for some reason they can't get help on the hotline or they want to try and get an attorney and there simply isn't one available at Legal Aid of Wyoming. Um, the Coalition Against Domestic Violence for those who might have domestic violence issues, the Teton County Access to Justice Center also is trying to um, match, match folks with, with attorneys in, in the Teton County area. Uh, the university does have some legal clinics. Um, you know, depending on the, the issue, there is an estate planning clinic now that's new, um, a general legal services line, a domestic violence line. Um, and then if, you know, if none of those are available, the uh, Wyoming State Bar also has a statewide lawyer referral service. And I'm sure some of these you're already aware of, but just to, to remind those or new, those of you who might be new and not aware. Um, the statewide referral service does have information um, for private attorneys. Uh, they do have a program that can may be able to provide pro bono or low cost services. Um, we're also working with them on a project to uh, provide a, a names of attorneys who are willing to take cases on a, a limited basis. So you know, maybe able to help somebody fill out forms but not go to court with them. Um, so that lawyer referral services is still a very important part of this process. Even if you're, um, you know, even if your patron, you know, can't can't afford a, a full attorney. Um, but all of this information again is on our website. Um, and under the find a lawyer page so feel free to refer folks there if they if they need additional assistance um, here's our website um, this website is just some general overview information before we'll take a, a quick look at it um, anyone can access the information on the website there is a lot of good information uh, referral information for finding an attorney um, there is a lot of self-help information and we're going to keep adding more to that um, that's one one thing I want to let you know, it's not to have, you know, a done, a done deal. We're, we're trying to add, you know, at least three or more topics every month. Um, we're planning on adding a, a lot of new topics um, on, in a variety of areas, so not just, not just what's there already. Um, so, you know, I do want you to, you know, give me your comments on that. If, if you know, there are some areas that you're getting a lot of questions, um, you know, and also, you know, feel free to check back often, and I'll try to get some information out to the library community to let you know when we've got some, um, a lot of you know new uh, you know important information on that website um, we also do have a calendar there of legal aid events um, so those are uh, community events seminars clinics that might be hosted at you know libraries or senior centers or various other community areas that are you know would be open to the public um, so we you know we actually have quite a few now right now for um, May and June uh, and you know around the state that you know most of these are being provided by legal aid of Wyoming um, or the Teton County Access to Justice Center. And we also, the Wyoming Center for Legal Aid is also going to be going out and hosting some events as well. Um, we did just hire a new outreach attorney to do some of those uh, trainings. So um, we are gonna be increasing the number of those that we, we are able to set up. And we're also going to be trying to work with your local attorneys um, to see if they're willing to you know, spend an evening um, providing some advice or maybe just an educational seminar to, seminar to the individuals in your area. Um, and we also do have a list of community resources. Um, that list is a growing list. That's you know kind of small right now, um, but we are going to be working with more community organizations, so we will add to that list as well over time. Uh, okay, let's see if we can. Jump out to the website just quickly. I'm sure you all can, can navigate around a website, but I just want to show it to you briefly. Um, so this is our main page. Um, so the navigation on the left here, people want to jump directly to finding a lawyer or the calendar or um, they're not quite sure where they need to help start. They just need you know legal help. Um, they can, again, find a lawyer, 
self-help information, calendar, community partners, or they can jump directly to it here from the top. Uh, let me just show you a, a little list of what we've got right now. Um, family law, that's a, a big issue. Um, you know, there's also some information um, about abuse. We've got some information for seniors, housing, money issues. Um, a little bit of information on public benefits. We're going to try and get some more information on that. Um, we did add some new information here on representing yourself. Tips for, you know, your first day in court. Uh, small claims. There's a little bit of information there about legal research. Um, we plan to add, um, we're looking right now at adding some information on estate planning. Um, we're going to try and get it some, eventually some information on immigration and, uh, you know, military veterans benefits. We do want to provide some uh, additional housing information, uh, debt collection information. We're going to get a little more information on bankruptcy and, uh, you know, identity theft. Um, so, you know, this is this is really just a, uh, you know, a, it's just the beginning and the end. So we're, we're hoping to have this, you know, we want to make this a really robust site with a lot of information. We're also going to be adding uh, forms. We're going to try and add videos. Um, so we, we do have a, a lot that we're planning to do here and we just you know asking you to bear with us as we as we add more information to the site because we want to make sure it's quality information we want to make sure it's up to date we want to make sure that you know it's in plain language so that um, any you know most people who read this will be able to understand to understand um, and there's a, obviously a contact information for us here as well uh, but you know please please you know take some time to take a look at the site if you haven't already so that you you um, you know, know, know that what you can, you know, send your, your patrons to, um, you know, I do think that, um, you know, we're trying to make that, uh, you know, sort of the hub of, of legal information in the state, um, so that, you know, there really is only there's a one-stop shop, um, for all of the information that you might need to get, at least, at least in terms of these civil legal issues. Um, you know, as I said before, I, here's, was a list of some of the, the top, upcoming topics. Um, you know, there are some areas that we're probably not going to um, necessarily have a lot of information on, um, you know, especially complicated litigation issues, uh, you know, commercial issues, um, you know, tort, tort injury, those type of things you're still going to want to, um, you know, still going to want to work with, with the, the law libraries in the state. Um, you're still going to want to keep, keep your books and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, it's, I mean, this is a spectrum of resources that we want to provide here. So I think we're going to all work together to try and fill in that, that spectrum to um, get, get your patrons to whatever information it is that they need. Um, okay, so the last project that I wanted to talk to you today is about the forms, the forms that we're, we're working on. Um, you know, as most of you know, there aren't a lot of forms here right now. There are some forms that are available on the Supreme Court website. And right now, folks can also uh, purchase those forms um, at their clerk's office. Sorry. Um, what we're going to do is we're we're working with the Supreme Court right now to um, automate those packets. So what we're going to do is we're gonna, going to set up a process where people can walk through something similar to a sort of TurboTax-like interface. It's not probably going to be as 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 uh, you know nifty as TurboTax, but individuals, litigants will be able to walk through these pro these packets and then at the end it will print out their forms. Um, we're expecting to have these forms available, the first forms that deal with divorce, divorce with and without children, um, later this summer or fall. Um, and they're probably going to take you know, one or two hours, maybe three hours to complete depending on whether people have all of their information collected and, and how complicated their cases are. Um, I, you know, I mostly want to talk to you about that because I know there are some libraries that have, you know, for example, like 30 minute limits on their computers. And so, you know, I, we are interested in working with public libraries to see if we can find a solution to that, if, you know, if that is an issue in your library. Um, there are some, you know, there are some funds available possibly to maybe, uh, you know, provide some additional computers in your libraries that are, you know, maybe just um, you know, dedicated to, you know, legal information and filling out legal forms. So I just, I want to let you know that these, these forms are coming, you know, it may, it may or may not impact um, the use, use of computers in your libraries, but, you know, we certainly don't want to add to your burden. So, um, you know, I really do want to hear about, you know, hear from you about this once these forms are available, you know, the good stuff that you're hearing as well as, you know, whatever negative impacts they may be having so that we can come to some, you know, solution. Um, so that we can make sure that, you know, as many, we do want to encourage people to use these automated forms and since there are a lot of folks who don't have, 
in computers at home, there you know we do expect some um, some of them to, to maybe seek um, seek the you know, to use the computers at your libraries. Um, in addition to the um, di automated divorce forms, we will be automating the child support and custody forms probably within another six to twelve months. We are right now working on name change forms, uh, guardianship forms. We've got some identity theft forms uh, sort of in the works. And then we're also going to be working on other areas, um, housing, you know, eviction forms maybe for people who are trying to fight an eviction case, debt collection wills, those sorts of things. Um, I do know that right now Legal Aid of Wyoming does have some forms available. We're going to try and coordinate with them so that we're not doing too much duplication or confusing you about where you should go to get those forms. But um, we are trying to work on getting more self-help forms out there, so I think that will be should be a benefit um, you know, to your patrons coming in and trying to, trying to get answers to these issues. Um, so I guess what I really want you to know is that I, you know, we would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you. Um, you know, I, I am a librarian. I do understand your issues and you know, we do want to work with you to the extent that we can. Um, you know, here's my contact information again. Um, you know, please you know, email me or call me. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you about what's going on at your library or what you can do or what ideas you might have. Um, I mean, you're on the front lines for some of these questions. Um, so, uh, you know, feel free to, to give me a call or an email and I'll, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can, um, you know, to see what we can do to, um, you know, to work together. And thank you very much for uh, tuning in. It looks like we, we got done here in a half hour, so that's great. Um, again, please give me a call or, or an email if you have any questions or, or want to talk to me further. Thanks a lot.